Hello friends, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Taylor, I'm also known as Trixie. Today it is Sunday, February 9th. I just got home from work a little bit ago. Logan ran to the corner store and I want to get this done. I'm so tired. The bus ride seemed like it took 10 years and it was so effing cold. Of course, of all days, of all days, you saw me wear my red flannel my maker's mark flannel yesterday that is the only thing i brought with me as a coat today so and it's sunday so the freaking buses run like not nearly as often as they normally do let's go ahead and do a weigh-in okay friends today it is february 9th day 40 223.8 balls. So today I weighed in at 223.8, which is a 1.8 pound gain from yesterday, which brings my total loss to 19.2 pounds, which seeing that not be 20 fucking uh, hurts my soul a little bit, but I know that this too shall pass. Oh, we gotta do our steps, I can't put this away. Okay, so I finished out yesterday with walking 18,740 steps, which now brings the grand total up to 493,034 steps. I fucking told you, I know for a fact that today I walked enough to get us over 500,000. I said we'd be over 500,000 by the end of the week. I'm telling you right now tomorrow when we do our tabulations we're gonna be at over half a million steps which fuck yeah fuck yeah okay um let's do our hundred days of weight loss book day 35 is called the eating pause okay during my years of weight loss counseling, I discovered a fascinating behavior that helps people know when they are full. At some point in the process of eating a meal, most people stop briefly and lay down their forks or put down the food they're holding in their hands. Then they might talk a little, watch TV, or even read the newspaper. After this pause in their eating, people will often glance down at their food and decide they want more. Maybe they think it still looks good or they just want more of the taste in their mouths. So they pick up their forks and resume eating. That, I just fucking read that like William Shatner and I'm sorry. I don't know why it came out of my mouth like that. But after finishing the rest of their foods, they exclaim, I shouldn't have eaten that because now I'm too full. I have done that many a times. Stopping at the pause. When you normally pause in your eating, you're usually at the exact point where you feel satisfied or comfortable. In fact, this pause seems to correlate exactly with the moment your stomach indicates it's taken in enough food. If you continue to eat, you quickly move to the level of being too full. Each person responds differently to the eating pause. Some people push their plates aside, subconsciously concluding they've had enough. Others wait a few minutes and then begin eating again. In this case, they miss the, the signal to stop. Watch carefully for the eating pause and then use it as a guide to stop eating. If you typically ignore it and eat more, you risk gaining weight because you'll always tend to take in more calories than your body needs. Built-in signal. As a weight loss tool, you can use the eating pause anywhere. It works especially well for times when you can't choose your portion amounts, such as at restaurants or banquets. Build the habit of watching for this internal sign that tells you when to stop eating. Even when you're just having a snack, letting your food sit for a while usually indicates you don't need to eat anymore. Once you're able to consistently recognize the eating pause, you'll always be able to tell how much food your body needs. Start watching other people eat, especially when you're at dinners or in restaurants. You'll be amazed at how easily you can spot others taking an eating pause. You'll also notice that many people pause but keep eating anyways. Huh. I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely done that, so. 
Okay, and now for our 100 days of weight loss journal. We have day 35, the eating pause. When you naturally pause in your eating, you're usually at the exact point where you feel satisfied or comfortable. In fact, this pause seems to correlate exactly with the moment your, your stomach indicates it's taken in enough food. If you continue to eat, you quickly move to the level of being too full. Today, at each meal and snack, notice when you pause in your eating, record how you recognize the pause as well as how much you had eaten at that point. So my first two meals were actually just really small. Um, especially on brunch days I don't like to have like a big meal I used to do like um a protein shake and like mix that up honestly I should start doing that again because I have plant-based protein powder in my cupboard um but I just did a garden barbecue like porkless uh bun thing I had two of those throughout the day I brought a bunch of food with me but I just like wasn't that hungry and then after brunch when we like can kind of eat a couple things I ate some pineapple and some strawberries so um and then my actual like big meal that I ate today I ended up going to Chipotle because I was like ooh, you know what sounds good a big ass burrito so then I went to Chipotle because you can get vegan food there I'm super dumb though because I didn't know that they had like the spicy tofu that you could do so I just did vegetables and like both kinds of beans and then guac and pico and corn and it was so good so fire but that was like my big meal I didn't eat it until I got home and I seriously ate maybe like a third of the burrito and then I like definitely had the pause because it was like a distinct like I actually took the burrito out of my hands and set it down on my bedside table because yes I was sitting in bed eating a burrito watching YouTube don't give a fuck. Um, so I totally, like, I set it on my bedside table, and then I was just like, hey, honey, will you put this in the fridge for me? Because you're already getting up to go smoke. So, um, yeah. So once you've paused, stop eating, regardless of the amount you have left. Wait at least two hours before eating again. Describe your experience with recognizing the eating pause. It was fine. It was blindingly apparent to me when it happened and I was fine. I was done. The last part um, I didn't actually do because it didn't apply because it said if you were actually hungry, if you realize you were actually hungry, work at fine tuning your listening skills and improving your ability to use the pa eating pause as a tool. Write a few notes about how you can improve this in the future since that didn't happen to me. I'm gonna like leave that for another time because I'm sure it will happen at some point. I'm a little parched, so. I stopped at the weed store on the way home. And I went to one I've never been to and they have like, you walk in and to the right there's like a mini corner store almost. Like they sell like snacks and drinks and then like bongs and you know, pieces and shit. And you go through another one and it's the weed store, but I was rather parched and so, and I bought weed sodas, but I knew if I, if I didn't get something else to drink, I would drink all of my weed sodas and then just be insanely stoned on the bus ride and that sounded fucking nice, but terrible. So I got some coconut water. And I don't know, like... Just kind of plain coconut water is not that great. This so isn't just plain. Like, I like the chocolate one from them, or I like ones with, like, hint of pineapple, but I just felt like sharing that. Okay. But now, it's on to the fun shit. Um, so I'm not, like, gonna go through each and everything because I found a lot over the last two days, but I was gonna show you some of the cool shells and stuff that I found. Um, on the beach next to my work yesterday and today so and these are li like all these containers I'm about to show you are literally just for yesterday and today so I got this one it's not completely full but it's got some sea glass it has like I'm obsessed with this one it's like you can tell that it must have been like the bottom because it has like the circular shape to it but then it has a fucking W which I love 
it looks like it has a W and an A, like W-A. So I love that. I love when there's these ones where you can see where it's like the lip of, um, you can see it's like the lip of something, see? And then it's like ridged. My manager loves these ones. She always asks to touch the ones that have the lines on them, which is, it's very satisfying. Um, I found this little piece of like pottery. Don't know what it is, but I like it. It's pretty. I'm of okay. Sorry, some, I haven't washed any of these yet. So this piece is gonna be such a cool necklace. It has like a fucking crack. You could do it this way so the crack's not as noticeable. But this is the shape that I want it to be, not this way, because I like it's like a nose. Anyways, see this one's another lippage of some sort. Okay, these are wild, and if anybody out there knows what, why are there so many pieces that are like little fucking cubes? Because I find little like cube shaped ones like this all the time. Like this one's kind of like, I don't know. I find them all the time and it's so weird. And then this piece is fucking thick and this, it looks like it has like rust on it. I don't know. It looks like it's rust or something. This one has, this one has numbers. That's kind of fun. It's also got a lip. I'm sure you guys are gonna be like, I can't believe this bitch is so into some fucking ocean trash, but sea glass is like the only kind of pollution that's cool. And it's not even cool, it's just like, I mean, it is kind of cool. It's not cool that there's so much fucking trash, but I felt like there was one other piece I wanted to show you guys, but I found a lot of green, which I don't find very much green. Or if I do, I usually find like little tiny pieces of green, which maybe once I get, oh, this one's kind of fun shaped. It's green. Um... Is that it? I think I found another piece of pottery. I think that's what I wanted to show you. Huh. Oh, I did find this cool rock too. One of my managers likes rocks, so I wanted to try and turn that. It's like, it's like flat on this side, so I wanna like, I don't know, like it could be a cool ring or something. I don't know. Okay, and then for shells, so I have this whole container that's just broken shells. I like these, though, because I call them, like, I want to make sea-themed dream catchers, and these are, like, look at it. It's, like, nature, nature made me a bead, you know? And, like, these ones are, like, they have, they have the tip still, but then you flip them over and you can do stuff. These are like the coolest because look, it looks like it's like a perfect shell. Looks perfect, looks perfect. Fucking entire backside is a bead. I really want to use these because I'm starting to get quite a nice collection of them to make like some fucking bitchin ass, uh, <laughs> fucking bitchin ass, um, kitschy like 1970s black velvet shell pictures if any of you have ever seen those like if you know you know they're amazing they're so tacky and so heinous and I love them so much so much oh my god um I got see look and here's another one looks completely perfect whole side is fucking cool and then I have these, I always called these ones my um, spinal column beads. Cause normally when I find them, they look like this and you can like, can see through it. And then here's like a really big one. See, and you can, hello, hello. <laughs> But they're super cool because this is what, like, the 
outside normally they're big I have a bunch of them but I give them t I give those shells to Caledonia I think they're from moon moon snail shells I think they're moon snail shells I just love them because they got like the fucking Ursula twirl and then I love that when they break they look like some kind of fucking I don't know I want to use those so I can make um A necklace that looks like I'm like a savage with like the bones of my fucking enemies hanging from my neck. Anybody else feel that way? Just me? This is also super cool. So I found this earlier today and I find them every once in a while. It's just the face of the shell. Like everything else has broken away. Because if you see, I think this is where it detaches and that's why it looks like the little spine nubbin. So it's just the face, ooh, and then it's flat on the back, and I have some fun ideas for these. I only have a couple of those, and then just a little tiny, you know, little tiny regular shell, and then I'm obsessed with these. I don't know, like, okay, they're little tiny oyster shells, and like, n this one's had a lot of it, like almost all of its color worn away because the other ones that I have that are like this these like waves are purple and they're so pretty and so I want to do this and I want to drill a little hole and then yeah make a little necklace and then I got so these are one of my recent things I started collecting and I have a really fun idea with for them, but it involves soldering, and I am scared to use a soldering iron, so I haven't started yet, but I'm going to keep collecting them, but they're to tips of crab claws, and I call them crab tips, and Logan came up with this genius fucking idea to, like, make some kind of creepy, like, cryptozoology, like, critter, because I have a bunch of just, like, crab shells, and, like, I just have a bunch of creepy fucking shit that I find on the beach. And, like, one day we stacked them all, like, a bunch of the crab tips up and then, like, put a crab shell on top of it and then took one of the hollowed out claws that I have and <laughs> made a monster. And if I can find the picture, I'll put it in here because it's fucking hilarious. Um, and then today I also found, so, I have this whole, it's a littler container, but these are, okay, so I don't know, I know these are for some type of snail because I've seen mukbangers fucking eat them. But I've always grown up calling them curly cues. And my best friend Andy's mom was actually the one who taught me how to look for curly cues when I was younger. And I found this curly cue that still has some like ridging to it that I quite enjoyed. And I found this one, so I have lots of broken ones like this, because this one is tiny, it's itty bitty, but it's striped, right? And I have lots of the broken ones, the nature's shells that are like this, but this is my first one that I found that's like, probably if I can ever find another one this size and like that, I'll make earrings. Um, and then this... Normally, I, I, I have a couple of these, but pretty much all of them are broken. Like, they don't have the tip, but I call these ones unicorn horn shells, and it's like, okay, so it's tiny, right? But look at how fucking cool it is. Like, can I beauty guru this so that, no? Okay, well, and then there's like a little hole up here, but they're so fucking cool. Let me focus on the shell. I tried, but it's just a little unicorn horn, and I love it. And then, okay, so I just get these regular clamshells if I find them, and they're still, like, you know, in good, decent condition because there is some kind of, like, centipede that eats them and burrows these holes through them, and I want to use them to make fucking ornaments. Yes. I'm a fucking weirdo. Anyways, thank you for listening to my TED Talks about seashells and other shit that I find at the beach. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry. I'm such a fucking weirdo. I'm not sorry. You're watching my videos. Anyways. Oh, here's a picture of the sea glass necklace that I made for my front desk girl Michaela's sister. 
I'm pretty proud of that one. It is a beautiful color of glass. I love that one. Um, I'm probably going to start an Etsy shop here soon. So when I do that, I'll let you know in case anybody wants to, you know, procure some sea glass or seashell jewelry. I also make jewelry with dried pressed flowers in them that are pretty fun. Uh, I love you so, so much. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below, leave a comment down below. If you like seashells, do the seashell emoji. Let me know that you like the seashells. I like seashells, obviously. I'm a fucking grown child. But I love you so, so much. I will see you tomorrow. Remember to go out there and make every day your best day ever because life is too fucking short not to. Mwah!